Cześć friends! Welcome to the next episode of the Savory Bites and Tidbits podcast series. You can find out more about this and my other recipe podcast over at savorybitesandtidbits.com. I would like to invite you to sign up to my weekly newsletter, where you will get information about new episodes, including the link to a collectible recipe card. You can combine these recipe cards into your own cookbook. If you are enjoying my content, you can show your appreciation by buying me a coffee over at savorybitesandtidbits.com. Your contributions really make a difference and support me with the continued production of this podcast. Let's get started with making the most popular sauce in the world. So today we will be making ketchup. I don't think I need to introduce this sauce, but I would like to tell you a little about its history. Ketchup was invented in China in 300 BC. In those days it was not like the ketchup we know today. The original ketchup was fish sauce made from salted fermented anchovies and it was served as a condiment. Ketchup breached Europe thanks to English sailors in the 17th century. The British tried to recreate its flavor using ingredients such as anchovies or oysters, mushrooms and walnuts. This is when ketchup started to be a condiment consisting of mushrooms. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, the word ketchup was used for the first time in 1682 in a book called The Natural History of Coffee, Tea, Chocolate, Tobacco. Then ketchup was brought to America, where the recipe was gradually changed. A significant change was the addition of tomatoes and the recipe of ketchup with tomatoes was published in the Sugar House book by Sandy Addison in 1801. The first occurrence of bottle ketchup being sold is believed to have taken place in 1837 and was produced by the farmer Jonas Yerkes. Nearly 40 years later, in 1876, ketchup was sold for the first time by Henry John Heinz. The recipe has changed over the years, but Heinz ketchup is still available today. Now we are in 2022 and I'm going to present you with my version of ketchup. So, let's begin! To prepare around 550 ml of ketchup, you will need 1 kg of tomatoes, 2 and half liters of water, 3 shallots, 1 small stalk of celery, 4 cloves of garlic, 100 g of light mascovado sugar, 25 ml of olive oil, 3 tablespoons of tomato puree. 2 tablespoons of Worcester sauce. If you can't get hold of Worcester sauce, use 2 tablespoons of Dijon mustard instead. It's not quite the same, it will have a different flavor profile. So you also will need 1 tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, 4 grains of allspice or 1 teaspoon of ground allspice, two bay leaves, two whole cloves, two teaspoons of ground pepper, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of chili flakes if you would like to prepare a spicy version. You will need the following accessories. A knife, a cutting board, a large bowl, a small bowl, a teaspoon, a tablespoon, a wooden spoon, 
a garlic press, a hand blender, a wok or large saucepan with a capacity of 4 liters, a saucepan with a capacity of 1 liter and a saucepan with a capacity of 4 liters and two jars of capacity of 300 ml to store your ketchup in. If all ingredients and accessories are ready, we can begin. First, we are going to prepare the tomatoes. I like removing the skin because later we don't need to use a sieve to separate them from the ketchup. I would like to show you my quick tip to remove the skin really easily. Pour water into a large saucepan and bring to a boil. Cut a cross on the bottom of each tomato with a sharp knife. Don't go too deep. When the water is boiling, turn off the hub and using a spoon gently put tomatoes into the water. Leave them in there for around 2 to 3 minutes. Then take them out and use a knife to peel the loose skin. Cut them into cubes, removing the green part which was attached to the stalk. Put them into a large bowl and set aside. To help make this ketchup recipe easy, we are going to prepare the other ingredients. Peel the charlots, chop them finely and put aside. Chop the celery stock finely and put aside. Peel the garlic and put aside. Measure 100 grams of light mascarvado sugar into a small bowl and put aside. So with all our ingredients now ready, we can begin making the ketchup. I have chosen a wok instead of a saucepan for this recipe because a wok has a large heating surface which significantly speeds up the preparation time of the ketchup. However, you can use a large saucepan if you don't have a wok available. Set your hub to a medium heat and add the olive oil to the wok. Add the chopped shallots and celery and saute until translucent. Then add the ground cumin and the garlic using a garlic press and fry for around 1 or 2 minutes. Add the chopped tomatoes to the wok and give them a stir with a wooden spoon until all the ingredients are combined. Add the Worcester sauce or Dijon mustard if you don't have Worcester sauce, apple cider vinegar and light mascavado sugar and mix together. Now add the other spices. These are the bay leaves, allspice, whole cloves, paprika, salt and pepper. If you would like to make a spicy ketchup, add the chili flakes here too and stir everything until combined. Boil until the whole liquid evaporates. In a wok, this can take around 15 minutes, but if you are using a saucepan, this can take up to 30 minutes. Please remember to stir from time to time. Once the liquid has evaporated, turn off the hub and remove the bay leaves, whole cloves and allspice if you used the grains. Move the mixture from the wok to the smaller saucepan with a capacity of 1 liter. At this stage you can add extra apple cider vinegar, salt or pepper to taste. Add the tomato puree for a richer red color and extra tomato flavor. Using your hand blender, blend the mixture to have a nice and smooth consistency. I prefer my ketchup to have some texture, so I don't blend it too much. Set your hub to a medium heat again and heat the ketchup for around 5 minutes stirring all the time because the ketchup can easily burn to the saucepan. Turn the heat off and allow the ketchup to cool down. 
If you like it extra smooth, I have one more tip. Once cooled, strain the ketchup through a sieve and there you go, really tasty homemade ketchup. Believe me, it tastes amazing. You can now place the ketchup into the jars and store it in the fridge up to 7 days. If you want to keep your ketchup longer, you can pasteurize the jars and keep the jars in the pantry up to one year. I have prepared a separate page about different techniques such as the pasteurization process. Please visit savorybitesandtidbits.com to find out more. I hope you feel encouraged to prepare your own ketchup. I'm looking forward to your feedback. The transcript of this episode, including ingredients and directions, can all be found on savorybitesandtidbits.com. Please remember to sign up to my weekly newsletter to grab the collectible recipe cards and be up to date with culinary inspirations. I'm looking forward to seeing you next Thursday. Smacznego, friends!